Come back, Snoopy. Come back, Snoopy. Peanuts, characters created and drawn by Charles M. Schultz. Text by Norma Simone. Background illustrations by Art and Kim Ellis. Published by Western Publishing Company, Incorporated. Copyright 1987. It's time to feed Snoopy, Charlie Brown said to his friend Linus. My favorite words in the English language, Snoopy thought. Charlie Brown soon returned with a dish full of food, some fresh water, and a letter for Snoopy. First things first, Snoopy thought. He ate his supper, then sat down to read the letter. It was from his brother Spike. Dear Brother Snoopy, the letter said, The desert is warm. The skies are sunny. There is no work to do. I hope you can visit me sometime. Snoopy was very impressed. Warm weather. Sunny skies. No work. Just then, Charlie Brown came back. I hope you brought seconds, Snoopy thought. But Charlie Brown did not bring seconds. Snoopy, he said, I've decided that you should earn your keep. You'll have to do some work in exchange for your food. You wait here for the newspaper to come each morning. Then bring the paper to me. You can start tomorrow. Snoopy was insulted. He had never worked a day in his life, and he did not plan to start now. Good grief, he said. Luckily, his friend Woodstock dropped by. Snoopy needed a friend to talk to. Beagles aren't working dogs, Snoopy explained. Beagles are eating and sleeping dogs. Woodstock agreed. There is only one thing I can do, Snoopy said. I must move away from here. I will live with my brother Spike in the desert. Warm weather, sunny skies, no work. The next morning, Snoopy packed his bag and left a farewell note for Charlie Brown. Goodbye, my faithful friend, he said to Woodstock. Snoopy traveled by bus, by train, and by paw. When he finally reached the desert, Spike was happy to see him. Let's have a long chat, said Spike. But Snoopy was very, very hungry. He unpacked his suitcase and took out his supper dish. When does supper come? Snoopy asked. Supper doesn't come in the desert, Spike explained. You hunt for it. Yipes, said Snoopy. I don't hunt. It's just as well, said Spike. There isn't much worth hunting. Snoopy was thirsty, too. Where does your water come from? he asked. That's easier, said Spike. That cactus over there has moisture inside it. If you eat enough of that, you don't need to drink. If I eat enough of that, I'll be full of holes, Snoopy said. Spike showed Snoopy how to eat the cactus by carefully avoiding the prickly spines. But Snoopy wasn't very good at it. Ouch! 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 said Snoopy. By now, Snoopy was very tired. Do you have a doghouse? Snoopy asked. Sorry, Brother Snoopy, 
said Spike. Just find a nice rock and make yourself comfortable. Snoopy found a rock, but he could not make himself comfortable. His legs hurt, his back hurt, and his head hurt. He was hot and he was hungry. All night long he heard strange sounds. He imagined creeping lizards, crawling queen snakes, and fierce gully cats. Snoopy did not sleep at all. Nothing could be as bad as this, Snoopy thought. Not even work. Meanwhile, Spike snored contentedly. Snoopy was still tossing and turning as the sun rose. In the distance, he saw an oddly familiar bird. How strange, Snoopy said. I thought we only had that kind of bird back home. It looks a lot like Woodstock. The bird flew closer. It was Woodstock! Woodstock was carrying a letter from Charlie Brown. Dear Snoopy, it said, please come home. Things aren't the same without you. I miss you very much. Your pal, Charlie Brown. Snoopy couldn't have been happier. He said goodbye to Spike, packed his supper dish, and set out for home. He traveled by paw, by train, and by bus. He arrived just in time for supper. The next day, Snoopy delivered the paper to Charlie Brown. It wasn't such a bad job after all. Snoopy got to read the paper first. I'm sure of one thing, said Charlie Brown. I'll never ask him to bring in the groceries.